Good morning, everyone. I hope that like me, you are coming to the end of this week feeling positive. The sun has been out, there are signs of spring, and Boris Johnson's roadmap out of lockdown makes us feel like there is some light at the end of the tunnel. And it's right to enjoy these things and thank and praise God for them. But I hope that you're coming into this morning knowing that we are together worshipping a God who has even better news. That we can receive his love, his grace and his blessing through Christ. Well, for those of you who are new to our online services, firstly, welcome. Um, this morning will include some songs, some prayers, some set words or liturgy, a talk and activity for children, and a sermon aimed more at older children and adults. Now we know that doing church at home feels a bit weird, but you do get used to it. And hopefully it won't be too long until we can meet face to face on a Sunday. Now during this term we'll be taking occasional breaks from our series in John's Gospel to consider our intentions to be a church that is a loving community growing in Jesus Christ by word and spirit. We've already considered what it means to be a loving community and this morning we're looking at the second part of our strap line, growing in Jesus Christ. A bit later on our pastor John Parker will be preaching to us and helping us to see that as a church, we should be seeking to be growing in number and in unity, both in Christ. But for now, let's sing together and remind ourselves that despite being in different places this morning, we are one in Christ. Sister, let me wipe your tears Brother, let me bear your fears Come on, every daughter, every son Let us walk in love for we are one Though we walk along and broken road We are here Forgive as you've forgiven us Let us walk in love for we are
Well, good morning, Colchester kids. I've got something very exciting uh, to tell you about this morning. It's about growing in Jesus Christ. And I've got something to grow. Can you see what it is? That's right, it's a seed. Now, I reckon if I put the seed behind my ear, it's going to grow. Don't you, don't you think that's right? No? Oh, OK. Uh, well, perhaps if I put it in the sofa. Can I put it in the sofa? And that'll, then it'll grow? No? Where do I need to put it? Oh, that's right. I need to put it in the soil. OK. And then one, once I put it in the soil, then I can put something on it. How about some peach squash? Would that, would that be good? Would that help it grow? No? Well, what will help it grow? M maybe some, some apple juice. Would some apple juice help it grow? It won't. Oh, so what, what do I need to put on the seed to make it grow? Oh, some water. Oh, of course. Yes, silly me. That's probably why I've got this here. So, this morning, what's exciting is I've got some special seeds. They're seeds that teach us about the gospel, the good news about Jesus being king and dying on the cross for our sins and rising again to give us new life so that we can be with him in heaven and he can be our friend. It's great, great news, gospel seeds. And I've got some special water. This water is like the Bible. It's how we make seeds grow. The Bible helps people to grow as disciples, as followers, friends of Jesus. And we learn about what it means to grow in Jesus from this verse. And I wonder if you can remember it with me. It goes like this. Go and make disciples. Do you think you can remember that? Go and make disciples. It was a command that Jesus gave to his first followers. Mm -hmm. He said that they needed to go and plant the seed of the good news about him and then water it. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go and we're going to plant a seed and water it. Let's go. Well, here we are. We've got our soil now. And we've got our gospel seed. We're going to plant the good news about Jesus into the soil. And then we're going to water it with the Bible. And do you remember what Jesus said? What Jesus commands us to do? Go and make disciples. And we can do that. We might want to talk to our friends at nursery. Tell them about our friend Jesus. We might want them to come to hear the Bible being taught through that the Cornerstone Kids uh, children's talks. It'd be great, wouldn't it, if some of our friends became disciples of Jesus. Go, Jesus says, and make disciples. We're going to sing a song. It's all about this. And then your activity, I think you can probably guess, is to go out into the garden, just like we go out, tell people about Jesus, and plant some seeds and water them. Hope you have a lot of fun. Jesus has risen. He has been given.
his sayings So they're obeying Everything that he commanded you No one is higher Well, while the children are going off for their activity, we're going to sing again. We know that God's word in the Bible is powerful. And this next song is a prayer asking God to work in us as individuals and as a church as we hear his word read and have it explained to us. Restoring us, renewing us, reviving us. Let's sing.
church with life and power. This morning's reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean that he had also descended into the lower regions of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, in deceitful schemes. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining us today at Cornerstone Church, Colchester. Uh, my name's John, I'm, I'm the pastor, and it's my real joy this morning to be uh, preaching a thematic sermon. It's uh, taking a variety of different parts of the Bible and, and using them to inform what we're seeking to do as a church. And it's uh, thematic because I'm preaching a, a series of three sermons on our strap line. We are a loving community growing in Jesus Christ by word and spirit. And we're particularly thinking about that middle phrase, growing in Jesus Christ. If you're new to Christian things, um, do sort of look in on what we're seeking to do. Um, but I'd love you to contact me um, to find out more about how you can find eternal life in Christ. That might be very new, you may have loads of questions, uh, and I'd love um, love to help you find out more. But let's just pray as we hear from God this morning. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and thank you that you are the risen and ascended King of the whole universe, that you rule heaven and earth. And so Lord, thank you that you can speak to each and every one of us by the power of your Holy Spirit as we open up your word and pray that you'd speak to our hearts, encourage us, strengthen us, change us for your glory. Amen. Well, what does it mean to be thinking about growing in Jesus Christ? Well, there's two ways we're gonna be thinking about growing in Jesus Christ, growing in number and growing in the unity of maturity, growing in number and growing in the unity of maturity. So first, growing in number through Jesus Christ. See, many people think that the church does not need to grow, uh, nor should it plan to grow. Many would say that if we plan to grow, well, it smacks of arrogance. God is sovereign. We, We cannot expect growth. But when we come to the pages of the New Testament, quite the opposite is true. There is the expectation that the church will grow because Jesus Christ is the sovereign king. 
At the end of Matthew's Gospel, a very famous saying of Jesus, Jesus commands growth. So he says in Matthew 28, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. See, Jesus commands, just before he goes back to heaven, as he ascends to heaven, to his place of the highest authority in heaven and on earth, he commands the church to go make disciples of the whole world. He's commanding growth. And we see this um, played out in the book of Acts. And we read this refrain in the book of Acts. For example, in chapter 6, verse 7, And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many priests became obedient to the faith. Or in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. That's in Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, where, where people were first called Christians. Or in Acts chapter 12, verse 24, But the word of God increased and multiplied. Or in Acts chapter 16 verse 5, so the churches were strengthened in the faith and they increased in numbers daily. So we see that what the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as the risen King is doing in Acts is bringing more and more people to put their trust in him and to obey his teaching. And we see the, the end or the goal of this is that there are countless billions of people from all nations gathered around the throne of Jesus Christ in heaven at the end of time. So we have to say that part of being church is the desire for more people to become Christians. That's Jesus' command. If we believe Jesus is the Christ, we will want other people to be disciples of him. And we're here in the Gospel today in Colchester because Roman soldiers most likely brought the Christian message to Colchester in the first century. Missionaries brought it again in the fourth century and on down the centuries there's been many people who have brought the Christian message and taught the Christian message in the British Isles. And whilst this is the job of the church to see more people become Christians, the growth is obviously down to God. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 and 7 we read this, What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. You see, the Corinthian church was dividing over which particular Christian preachers they preferred. Some preferred Apollos, some preferred Paul. And Paul just makes the point, look, we're, we're just servants. We're irrelevant to the growth. It's God who gives the growth. So both, both in starting churches and in strengthening churches, in people becoming Christians and growing cr Christians, it is all because of God's power. It is nothing from people, though God graciously involves people. So growing in Jesus Christ means we are seeking to grow in number, the number of people becoming Christians. It's not arrogant to expect growth. Rather, it is humility in obedience to the command of Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations and, and to teach those who are disciples to obey him. Humility is not to not expect growth. It's to credit God with all the growth that we see. And so this... This forces us to our knees, doesn't it? It, it? it causes us to cry out to God that he would grow his church. And not just Cornerstone Church, Colchester. He, he wants to grow the church in the whole of Colchester. Not just our church, but all churches that faithfully proclaim the message of Jesus, that are seeking to obey the message of Jesus. And we see this in the pages of the New Testament. It's it's never the case that Paul refers to individual congregations. He always refers to the Church of God in Ephesus or in Corinth or Colossae or Jerusalem. It's as if the church is the church in a city, not just an individual congregation. 
But that means, as as members of Cornerstone Church Colchester, we're as we were thinking uh, with the children, we are wanting to go out with the gospel and plant it in people's lives, and we're wanting people to become disciples, to be baptized, and then that 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 seed, if you like, to be watered by the the teaching of the Bible, but we must always give glory to God. It's God who gives the growth. It's God who's promised his church to grow. And so it's God who receives all the glory for his church growing. So that's the first thing we're thinking about. We're growing in number through Jesus Christ. But secondly, we're growing in the unity of maturity in Jesus Christ. It's not just that we want to grow numerically and want there, we want there to be many more Christians in Colchester. Whether they join our church or not is secondary. We want more people to become Christians. But we also want people to grow, once they become Christians, in to maturity. And we should seek that for ourselves. I, I, I should seek it for myself. All of us want to become more mature, to grow in Jesus Christ. And this means growing in unity. Now we, we need to get out of our minds the cultural, cultural setting that we're in and I've already alluded to this. The early church we know met in homes m maybe a maximum of 120. Yes in some locations like in Ephesus they could meet in a lecture hall of Tyrannus but when Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus it's not because they met in one place. There were no church buildings that would have held more than 120 people until the fourth century. Now, he wanted them to be united across the city, a city of some 40,000 people. And he's urging them to live in a particular way as they relate to one another. What does he encourage? Well, first of all, he encourages them to preserve unity. So be encouraged to preserve the unity we have. Be encouraged to preserve the unity we have. And this is when uh, it would be really helpful to me if you could turn to Ephesians 4 and follow along if you haven't been following uh, other passages that I've quoted thus far. So Paul begins, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have, to which you have been called. This, this refers back to the choice that God had made of the Ephesian Christians who'd been converted out of paganism into the Christian life. He said, look, you've been chosen, you, you've been called. Now live out the purpose of God's choosing of you. And what does that mean? Well, it means that they are to have certain character, a certain character. Verse two, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. That's the kind of character that a Christian was to have in their relationships with other Christians. And he says that they're to be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Well, why? Why are we so... Uh, to, to have this kind of character, a humble and gentle and patient character, why are we to bear with one another in love in church life when there's often frustrations why are we to be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit by, by peaceful relationships with one another and peaceful relationships with other Christians in Colchester? Well, Paul explains, and it's stunning. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Of course Paul is referring to the Christians in Ephesus and he's saying very clearly we can't, can't miss it can we? A Christian has been chosen to belong to one body, one Lord, one God, one Spirit, one Father of all who is over all and through all and in all Christians. We, we, we can't miss that and he's saying look make every effort to keep that unity that's what you've been chosen for to be part of the one universal church. Now, self-harm is an increasing problem, isn't it, very, very sadly, in these days of, of poor mental health, of the, the effects of electronic devices on us, uh, particularly teenagers. 
and, and such destructive feelings can lead to, to, to cutting and to eating disorders and in its most extreme mm -hmm. cases it, it has led people to want to remove limbs and even ask for surgery to do so and, and there's a spiritual equivalent in the church a, a local church or, or churches in a city can self-destruct by deciding that certain Christians do not belong certain Christians should be cut off and Paul would say no we are one we've been called to one body we are to make every effort in gentleness and humility and patience and long-suffering to preserve this oneness this unity that genuine Christians all have it's never right to do that so let's just think about this a bit more practically where, where to make every effort to preserve the unity we have at Cornerstone Church Colchester because this unity is in the Trinity is in God Father Son and Holy Spirit it's a blasphemous thing to divide one from another and, and this is obviously going to be easier when we're, we're small as we are at the moment but if we are to grow if God gives the growth there's going to be more challenges we'll need to exercise more patience more long long suffering more gentleness we'll need to encourage one another to keep the unity that we have in God the Father Son and Holy Spirit where to resist the feeling that will challenge that unity that the feeling to to reject certain people or people from certain backgrounds or, or people who are particularly difficult and this unity extends also to other churches in the city of Colchester. It is to be expressed in genuine patience and gentleness. We are to aim to work with all other faithful churches. And that will bring frustrations. It already has for me. I'm not going to go into details. But this is one of the marks of the, the lack of health of the body of the church in our nation at this time that we constantly are dividing from one another we're not seeking to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace so Cornerstone Colchester is committed to making every effort to keep the unity within ourselves and the unity with all other genuine Christians but this doesn't mean that we are to seek unity with all those who call themselves Christians with, with those who may maybe call themselves Christians and reject Jesus as the Son of God and oppose his teaching and we'll come on to this a little later so we are to be encouraged to to preserve this unity but also we're to use our gifts for growth in the unity of maturity in Christ that mm -hmm. seems a bit unnecessarily complicated doesn't it the unity of maturity in Christ but I think it's vitally important way of summarizing what Paul is teaching here in Ephesians 4 the unity of maturity in Christ see every Christian even the most recent has gifts to build up the church on what basis on what basis does Paul teach this well look at verse 7 with me but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift see Paul emphasizes each one he's not talking about the grace of salvation that called us that God has expressed in saving us no this is the grace God's generosity to us in the the talents the gifts the, the abilities that we have that are given by the Holy Spirit to build up the church so that we all reach maturity so that more people join us and become Christians but we may say oh but you know my gifts are not that impressive well, who is it who has given them to you? Look again at verse 7. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, has measured out the gifts he wants to give to all his people. He has given you gifts. And then Paul quotes from the Old Testament and explains why it is that Jesus has done this. So verse 8, therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men or to people. See, when Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, having 
defeated the devil, ha having dealt with our sin and death on the cross, having been raised from the dead to, to new life, he ascended to the, the place of highest authority in heaven and on earth. And from there, as a victorious king, he's given gifts to his people. How able is he to give us gifts? Well, Paul then some, says something that stretches our minds. He says, in saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. This is how able Jesus Christ is to empower us and to give us gifts. He became incarnate. He, he died on the cross. He went to hell, taking our punishment. He defeated death and Satan. He's raised from the dead. He's ascended to heaven. And so now, as the Son of God, the incarnate Son of God, he fills all things. He fills your body. He fills the room in which you are sitting in. He fills the whole earth. He fills the moon, the, the solar system, Mars, Venus, Jupiter. He fills the Milky Way. He fills all galaxies, all trillions upon trillions of stars. So, of course, this one is able to equip us with the gifts that we need. And the measure he has used is perfect just for us. We might say, oh, what, I want somebody else's gift over there. That's, that's far, far better. Or why can't my gift be greater like that person's over there? No, no, no. He's given us the gifts, the exact gifts that we need to fulfill his purposes of building his body, the church, on earth. He fills heaven and earth. So let's not be ungrateful for the gifts that we've been given. Let's hone them and nurture them and use them. Let's serve the church with them. Are we using our gifts? Are we enjoying the gifts that Christ has given us to bless others, to help them to grow? Are we thankful to Jesus Christ for the gifts that we've been given? Do we see them as gifts that we have been given, that they are just that, gifts? No, nothing about us. It's all about Jesus. Paul then goes on to explain something of how the gifts operate in the church. So he says in verse 11, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up the body of Christ. Paul says that the word gifts, the speaking gifts of apostles and prophets are, are vital for this, for this growth. Uh, evangelists and pastors and teachers. For the Ephesians, obviously, uh, the New Testament had not yet been uh, fully written. And so Paul emphasises the word gifts as people. But now for us, it's the word gifts which enable us all, equip us all to grow up into maturity in Christ and to grow up into unity. That's where he goes next in verse 13. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith. There's unity, you see and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, there's maturity, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, you can't get more mature than human beings growing up in maturity in Christ so that they attain to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. How much growing we have to do, how much growing I have to do, but what does this preserve us from? Well, Paul says it preserves us, verse 14, so that we may no longer be children tossed and to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. You know, this brings stability to us personally, maturity to us. This is what the word gifts in the context of a church in which we're all seeking to use our different gifts so that we all grow up in maturity together. This is what they do. And it preserves us individually and as a church from being vulnerable to the deceitful schemes of people, to false teaching. Now, I don't know if you read about the reports of a man who fell into the sea. Um, uh, he, his name was Vidam Perevertlikov. 
a, a Lithuanian engineer, aged 52, and he fell from the Silver Supporter cargo ship into the Pacific Ocean. How did he survive? For 16 hours, being tossed to and fro by the waves? Well, he clung on to a, 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 light, a, a boy. It was, it was just floating in the sea uh, by coincidence, but he recognised um, that it was God at work. He, he wasn't a religious man, and by the end of this experience, he, he was a religious man. That's how the Times reported it. Well, how do we stop ourselves being tossed to and fro in the waves? Like, I mean, even more horrific thought, isn't it, of, of, of a child in the sea? Well, we cling on to the one who's rescued us, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we grow up in our knowledge of him. We, we mature in him. We become strong in him. And it's not something we just do on our own. It's something we do in community with others as others use their gifts, be it the word gifts or, or other gifts in the church, gifts of encouragement, uh, the love that we have for one another. This is how we grow up and become solid and mature and stable and, and lack the vulnerability of an immature Christian. That's where Paul goes next. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is their head, into Christ. We need to grow up into him. He needs to be the one we're clinging to, wanting to become like, growing in knowledge of. And it's from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. See, I, I worry about people who think that the Christian life is an individualistic life, a, a life of self-improvement. No, it's one of being in relationship with others, speaking the truth in love to one another, helping one another to use our gifts, helping one another to be gentle and to be bearing with one another, to be humble, to be growing up into the fullness of Christ-like character. That takes time. And it comes through speaking the truth in love. It's a community project. It's not self-improvement. And this is where Paul ends. He, he ends saying that we are together to grow up into him who is the head. That is Christ. We're, we're to use our gifts together. Yes, as we follow what the Bible teaches, as we put into practice what we hear through the word ministry, but that's how we're equipped, how each part works properly so that we all grow up into unity. But it's a maturity thing. It's a, it's a unity of maturity. So we're growing in the unity of maturity in Jesus Christ. Now, that means we need to be aware of two things in our church life. We need to be on our guard for two things. One is immaturity and the other is disunity. If we want to grow in Jesus Christ, and that means we grow in the unity of maturity, then the threat to those things is immaturity and disunity. And the two are linked. Uh, maybe a Christian joins us in the, the weeks and months to come, and that would be great. And they're very keen to become a part of us, and we welcome them with open arms. We welcome them into our loving community. But they're clearly pretty immature as a Christian. They don't really value Bible teaching for whatever reason. They're not loving in the way that they speak or relate. And they're very keen to become the, a leader in the church, to be up front. Well, those are dangers. They're the dangers of immaturity. And those dangers of immaturity can lead to great disunity. I've seen it in church life happen time and time again. Uh, and one of the ways we will be seeking to help people mature is to have a, a membership of the church in which members of the church are committed to maturity of life, to, to, to basic Christian uh, disciplines of, of coming to church regularly, of, of coming to the, the prayer meeting, of, of, of giving financially, of, of seeking to love one another practically. And only those who are members, those who are mature, will be able to be leaders in the church and we'll have a membership which um, helps that church discipline which often can go awry. So 
it's really important that we see our unity as something which is for the mature and is led by the mature. And this also means that in terms of how we partner with other churches, that we are to have a unity that is defined by Christian maturity, not just any old Christian unity, not just anybody who calls themselves a Christian we will partner with. No, because the desire to unite with all who claim Christian faith without any discernment is a unity of immaturity. See, Paul goes on to write later in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, these words. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partners with them. He's saying don't be united with those who claim to be Christians but don't live the Christian life, particularly in the area of sexuality and the area of greed. In other words, there were those in Ephesus, the city of Ephesus, who claimed Christian faith, who claimed to be on the way to heaven, who claimed to be in the kingdom of Christ, who were not because of their sinful lifestyle. And the same is true today of Christians and churches. So we're not to be united with them. So, these are the two ways we are seeking to grow in Jesus Christ. We're seeking to grow in number in Jesus Christ through him and his power for his glory. And we're seeking to grow in the unity of maturity in Jesus Christ. And uh, we will know that we need great power from God to do this. And that's what we'll see next time. How the power we need to be a loving community growing in Jesus Christ comes from the power of his word and spirit. Well, let's pray. Lord, please would you so work in us that we would grow in number through Jesus Christ and in him for his glory and that we would grow in our maturity and so be united in deeper and greater ways and that we would be wise in other churches and other Christians with whom we might unite in the great work of reaching Colchester for Christ. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, it's great to have with us uh, Tom. Uh, Tom Owen is our video editor, and I thought it'd be great to hear a little bit from him about how God has, has grown this gift uh, in his life uh, of great benefit to us, because we, we don't see Tom. We, we probably hear him read every now and again, but we don't see him on screen because he's doing the background work of video editing. But um, Tom, if I told you a year ago that you'd be spending, I don't know, four or five hours a week um, splicing together different bits of video. What 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 would you have thought? I was like you're mad. I think <laughs> you know we never we never would have thought this was the way church services were going to go. I guess so. Uh, I think we kind of thought we go to a Sunday service, uh, church building. Didn't think that that time would be spent putting it together, and and that's how church services were going to look over the last mm -hmm. sort of year or so. 
yeah well we're, we're so grateful to you uh, doing the behind the scenes work it, it it is the case that were you not able to use your gift we wouldn't really be seeing each other would we on, on a Sunday because although I might be recording stuff we wouldn't be able to splice it together and others would be recording uh, you know we, we need to splice it together to have that overall service so so how do you think God has has sort of grown this gift in you yeah, well, I think when I first started doing this, I didn't have a clue, really. I taught myself a lot of how to do it. Um, and God's given me that gift to be able to firstly spend time teaching myself to do it. But then secondly, the time to actually do it every week. Um, you know, it's been a strange year and, you know, I've, I've been furloughed for a lot of it. So I've had more time. Um, so although God's kind of taken my main job away from me, He's given me this time to be able to spend time putting the service together. So um, God's been really gracious with it in a, in a really strange way, but in a great way. And, and, and you keep saying to me that you enjoy it, which I can't quite understand because I get frustrated just trying to record a video, let alone um, actually splice lots of ones together. But, but, but this is true, isn't it? That you, you do it's, it's, lovely. It's, it's nice to see it come together. You know, when you, you start of a blank canvas every week, everyone puts their bit together and it is a team effort. It comes together at the end of it, you can sit back and go, yeah, this looks good. And it's nice to see, you know, this, this, this sort of video, which is what it is come together, um, you know, and, and, and people will receive it. Well, I think one of the things we've been learning through this, this last year is that the Lord has been raising up new gifts amongst us, hasn't he? And that's, that's the case within, uh, the launch team but how, how have you found you know what we've been learning from Ephesians and the fact that speaking the truth in love and unity is is so important how, how have you experienced that in, in sort of developing the gift of, of, of video editing yeah I think when I when I put these services together it's not just me um, you know we we often work as a team well we always work as a team mm. in terms of the videos coming together but every week we're always having conversations about what worked well what didn't work well and we're trying to make it always improve it mm. um and we can only do that through loving conversations between us as a team um with my wife rachel you know she she we always having a conversation about this time is spent for putting church service together and mm. you know, she's been really fantastic in supporting me with that mm. so you know all these times that you, we spend together um or well, i spend putting the service together as as it's done through the loving gift that God has given us, but you know, we, we work as a team and it's produced conversations that we've had as a team and with others as well, just about how it all comes together. Yeah, I, th I think, I think that's right. I think that's been one of the joys of the last year, hasn't it? Is, is seeing how the Lord has been developing amongst us a deep unity through, you know, the challenges we've faced, but also the conversations we needed to have, uh, being patient with one another, uh, loving it, it takes humility doesn't it to take feedback which I think is always important when, whenever we're putting something together and you've been great at that and then being able to sort of build in different views to make things better as we've gone along and so I think we're all just really pleased at the end result and uh, yeah so thank you for all that you've been doing I thought I thought it'd be good on the back of just hearing a little bit from you to just to pray because um again in ephesians we've been hearing about the lord jesus christ fills the universe he's the lord of time and he's given you more time um but it'd be good to be um praying so i'll sort of kick us off um and then you're going to pray and then i'll finish but let, let's let's pray let's pray lord jesus christ we we praise you and thank you that you are the victorious king that you have ascended in victory to heaven uh, that you went down to the lowest place on earth when you died on the cross, that you paid uh, hell for us, and yet now you have all authority in heaven and on earth, and we praise you that you you give gifts to your people, and we, we praise you and thank you for the gifts that you've given us, and uh, Lord, we pray that you would uh, continue uh, to give us gifts in your precious name. Amen. Lord, we're so thankful for many of the gifts that you have uh, provided to us as, as not just me individually, but as a team. Um, we're so thankful that we're able to use these gifts that you provide us to, to grow and to build Cornerstone Church Colchester. 
uh, and we're doing it so that your word can be received by others. So, Lord, just pray that you please uh, provide us uh, with all these gifts and that we need now and uh, for the future, Lord. Mm. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, and Father, as we read in Ephesians 4 that the gifts that you've given us from the risen and ascended Lord Jesus are uh, to grow in our maturity, to grow in our unity, in our likeness to the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you continue to help us to speak the truth in love, particularly in the weeks and months ahead when uh, lockdown lifts in, in, in your will, Lord, we, we are looking forward to being able to, to meet in person, maybe we're looking forward to uh, growing in number and, and growing in our ability to, to love one another. Uh, and yet, Lord, we pray that you would uh, strengthen that unity in us, keep us humble, keep us patient, keep us uh, bearing with one another in love, help us to remember the unity that we have in you, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And please help us to grow in unity, um, not just within uh, ourselves as a church, but also with other churches uh, that are faithful uh, to you. And we pray all these things, that your kingdom may grow, that more people may know you, Lord Jesus, and that we may all grow up into you. And we pray this for your glory's sake. Amen. so much for joining us this morning. I hope you'll be able to join us for our Zoom coffee and chat too. If you don't already have the link then please do email us now. The address is pastor at cornerstoneculturester.co.uk. 
But as we finish, let me just close with these words from 2 Peter. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Well, I hope you have a lovely Sunday and we'll see you next week, if not before.